What's up, big homies? How we done? And hope you're having a fantastic day so far, fantastic week. I hope you and your family and your friends are safe and healthy during these interesting times that we got in the world. I'm bringing you along for another day in the life of your boy, Ricky. I have my oatmeal, headed over to the gym. I have my oatmeal about 75, 90 minutes before, let that digest. Then I'm off to the gym, use those complex carbs nicely to fuel my session. Let's get this bread. So I'd like to walk you through this entire little bit of footy lifting and fitness session. As you see here, I'm just starting out of the hands, just getting myself warm, using the inside part of my foot, moving on to the lace part of my foot. As I always say to you guys and girls, no matter how advanced you are, you can always go back to the basics. And here I'm just getting my touch nice and warm. Go next to a double inside out of the hands. So as you see here, I'm really focusing and stressing the technique of every single drill and trying to really be intricate with all the details. Use the right foot, use the left foot. Do about 10 to 15 reps, even 20 reps with each exercise. And as you see here, we're just advancing as we go on, really just trying to get the touch nice and warm, the legs warm, and the mind warm before getting into a physical session. As you see here, moving on to a lace thigh out of the hands, like I said here, using both feet, really trying to cushion that ball with the thigh, and then hitting a nice lace ball to the wall, and then catching it. So all I'm really doing is one rep, and then catching it. Then we move on to a bit of aerial control, just juggle the ball, pop that ball up, and then as you see here, I'm catching it, taking a nice chest touch, bring it back down, and repeating the same thing every single time. As you see here, really trying to open up that chest, up, open up those arms. Then we move on to a juggle plus an inside touch. So as you see here, just juggling the ball, popping it small, and then just taking a touch with the inside part of the foot. Normally I pop the ball higher, but I'm really just trying to get a couple touches before I start my physical session. And then we go on to a juggle plus an outside touch. This is an excellent exercise to work on your touch as well as your hip mobility. Because as you see, really turning that foot out really requires a lot of external rotation of the hip. So as I always say, before you do any technical work, you really want to be warmed up no matter how light you consider it to be. And then we're moving on to a juggle plus a head touch. So as you see here, just juggling the ball, popping it up, and then cushioning it back down with my head, and then repeating the same exact thing. Then we got into the physical session, started off with some band sprints, really focusing on acceleration, driving those legs, and driving those arms. Then we moved on to some U-curved runs through the door here, through the glass door, as you see. A little bit scared, really not trying to run through the glass, so I slow up a bit, which probably isn't the best. Then we move on to some plyos, as you see, trying to be as quickly off the ground as possible. That's the goal with all plyometrics. You want to be quick off the ground as possible, get out, and really try to be nice and bouncy. And we moved on to the first strength exercise of the day, which is a dumbbell lunge with a foot elevated on a plate or a platform. And all I'm really trying to do is drive that knee over the front and the second toe, really trying to drive out of my glute and my hamstring of that front leg, slight touch with that back leg, and then really trying to be explosive up. Then moving on to the second strength exercise where I'm doing a dumbbell Romanian deadlift, really trying to work on driving that ass back, having a nice, strong, and neutral back, and really pulling and driving up through the heels to feel it in the hamstrings and the glutes. As you see here, as I've been coached by my trainer, I slightly want to hunch that chest over to keep a nice, low rib cage. I don't want the rib cage to flare out. So he's taught me not to really have the best posture. It's okay to let the weight pull you down. Really let the weight pull you down below those knees and then you're pulling back up with those hamstrings. And then I finish off with some dumbbell lateral raises. Slight bend in the arm. Don't need to be super strict here like we've always been taught. You can have a slight bend in the arm, get a nice little cheat in there and really try to shrug it up with those traps. As footballers, we want to be good in our 1v1 duels. And then I moved on to the worst 
part of the session. The absolute worst suffering I've ever been through. Got on this rogue bike, really thought I was going to hit it out of the park because I'm a big endurance guy. I really love this type of work. But obviously, after not playing for about eight, nine months, the fitness levels were a bit lower. And this thing absolutely crushed me. As you see here, I think my score was about two minutes. Uh, generally, I would probably hit 145, 150. I'm going to try this when I come back again in the winter. Um, but yeah, it just absolutely crushed me. And sometimes it just opens up your eyes and gives you a new perspective that you need to get fitter. And as you see here, <laughs> this, I think I was down and out for about 10 minutes. Definitely not the most enjoyable thing. But that's fitness, that's footy. Got to get myself back in shape. And you realize how much injuries and, and being out for a while really, really take a toll on your fitness levels, your body, and your mind. And it's all about just coming back gradually, being patient, trusting the process, and really following along with all your rehab protocol, doing the little exercise, the little details every single day to get back. I mean, I'm still doing two hours of rehab per day. What's good, homies? How we doing? Feeling like absolute crap, I gotta say. That was the hardest endurance thing I've ever done. The most suffering I've ever been through with any type of fitness, and I'm an endurance type guy. Um, then again, I've only been eight, nine weeks out of surgery. When I come back in the winter, I'm gonna crush that thing. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching me suffer. I was supposed to do some footy after, but I feel like absolute crap, and I'm just gonna sit down with my videographer at Starbucks edit up some clips and then see what's good. What's up homies, how we doing? Big session, tough session. Did some video editing with the videographer at a coffee shop, got some things done. Now we got Chipotle. A little bit of barbacoa, black beans, pinto beans, brown rice. Time to munch. I got a meeting in a couple minutes, so that's why I got Chipotle, otherwise I would've cooked, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's enjoy the rest of the day. What's up, homies? As you saw, just got done with a massage. Really essential, flying out tomorrow. Need to get everything fluid, everything nice and ready to go. And that's a wrap. Been five months. Treatment after treatment after treatment. Now it's time to get this work. I'm gonna head back, grab some nice dinner, do my stretching, do my core work, and then that's, that's gonna be a night. As I said before, my routine is routine. That's what it's all about, routine over discipline. See you in a bit. So I get this question all the time and I want to cover this for you. How to deal with an injury as a footballer? Obviously, this is one of the most upsetting things as a footballer, having an injury, having to watch your team perform on the pitch while you're out doing your tedious little rehab exercises, you're doing your rest. But at the end of the day, you can look at an injury either as a setback or something that's an obstacle that's gonna get you higher. So you can either look at it as a setback and dwell on it and complain and feel bad for yourself and pity yourself and look at it as a way to get lower or you can use it as a way to get higher and work on what you need to work on to get you back stronger, faster and better when you come back to the pitch. So the number one thing is you need to focus on the things that you can do. Don't worry about what you can't do. Worry about what you can do. It's just like gratitude. Be grateful for what you do have, not what you don't have. And that's the most important thing. Don't stress about things you can't do. Just do the things in the present that you can do and make sure you have a macro plan of getting back to the field. Personally for me, what happened is I was feeling this pain for a while in my groin. I think many of you know, I got sports hernia surgery in January. I came back to the US in November from abroad and I said to myself, I'm gonna nip this thing in the bud right now. I need to come back to Europe fresh in the spring season and the next season and that's what I've done now. But this was a long process. I hadn't played footy for eight, nine months. Could you imagine where my mind was? But the only reason my mind was in a right place is because I had a plan. I had a plan, I had light at the end of the tunnel. And that's the most important thing. You need to set short and long term goals to reach. Otherwise, you're never gonna get there. So I had a plan to come back to Europe feeling fresh, feeling good, without pain. And it was, it was such a process. I went back to the US in November 
as many of you know, I'm a very holistic guy. So I was doing every single thing that I can to try to avoid surgery. So what did I do? I went back home. I saw about seven different doctors. And when I finally landed on the one that I really trusted, I said, I might go through with this. But before I went through with the surgery, I tried two months of just pure physical therapy, laying off the ball work, laying off field work, any type of sprinting that would stress the groin. And I just worked on strength work, rehab, worked with a physical therapist, worked with my guy, my strength coach, worked with a masseuse, and I tried to nip it in the bud, but nothing was helping. So I said, all right, I'm gonna do this surgery. I think it was January 11th, 2021, I did the surgery. And after the surgery, I said to myself, I'm gonna come back feeling fresher and better than ever before without any pain. And that was the end goal, that was the goal. But it took a long time. And like everyone always says, trust the process, take it one step at a time. It's a cliche saying, but cliche sayings are cliche for a reason, because they work. When you trust the process, when you trust what your physical therapist has in store for you, your strength coach has in store for you, your masseuse, whoever you're working with, you are gonna get to your end goal. So what did I do? I took every day, one step at a time, and I'm here now, a couple months later, I've already played four games, have no pain, I'm feeling really good, I'm not at 100% match fitness, and I'm not really used to this, because generally every pitch that I play on, I'm the fittest guy on the pitch, but, you know, I've been struggling a bit, I've been struggling, but I've been trusting the process, not trying to rush myself to get back too quickly, I'm fully back now, but I want to get 100% match fit, 90 minutes match fit, week in, week out, being the fittest guy on the pitch, that's my end goal. And I'm gonna get there in three, four weeks when the season starts. But obviously right now and before, it's tough, but you have to embrace the process. You have to trust the process. Take it one step at a time and don't try to get too far ahead of yourself. So without further ado, the most important thing is to really set short-term and long-term goals for yourself. Do what you can do when you're injured and really just take it one step at a time. Do not rush the process, trust the process. Unbelievable, Pa. What do we got here for dinner? We have a seafood stew, a San Francisco style seafood stew. You could call it bouillabaisse, chopino. Almost all packed up here, guys. Look at all this. You guys and girls know about these glasses, blue light blocking glasses. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Please drop a comment, and I will see you in the next video. Deuces.